in the hopes of escaping their country that has been enveloped with chaos and violence, Nico and his pregnant wife, Mia, along with other terrified families, make their way to the cargo containers that will be sailed out to sea. They were left with no choice but to risk their lives fleeing, otherwise they die in the hands of their own countrymen. In the cargo container, Nico tells Mia to save the Snickers bar until they get to safety. The container departs and the other escapees drill holes for them to be able to breathe. It later halts and a bunch of people desperately enter the container, pushing Nico farther from Mia. Seeing how crowded the container is, the smugglers force half of them to transfer, including Nico. Mia's container stops at a checkpoint and they hide behind a secret door. When the inspector goes inside to check and finds no one, he goes out and asks one of his men to stand on the interior end of the container and shoot. Seeing the gap between the gunshot hole and the edge of the container, the inspector learns that it has a secret compartment. When he tells them he'll give the order to shoot if they don't come out, Mia climbs up on one of the crates. Frightened, one of the escapees opens the door of the secret compartment, revealing herself as well as the others. Mia reaches out her hand to another escapee to help her climb up, but the inspector gives the order to shoot, eliminating everyone except Mia. A violent storm causes multiple cargo containers to fall off the ship, including Mia's. She falls unconscious, and when she wakes up, she finds herself isolated in the middle of the sea. In search of resources, she opens the crates and finds Tupperware, clothes, TVs, earphones, and alcohol. She tries to use tape on the holes to block the water from coming in, but later uses the rubbers and Tupperware lids. She also attempts to reduce the water by pouring it back into the sea. Nico calls and informs her that the driver abandoned them outside the city. She informs him of her situation, and when she starts having an emotional breakdown, Nico comforts her. Later, during another storm, she gives birth to a baby inside the container and stores her placenta in one of the Tupperware. On the third day, she drills through the top of the container, but before she can punch a huge opening, the drill runs out of power. She then uses a Swiss Army knife to resume, but it later breaks. With limited food and water, she tries to feed herself little by little, but she later runs out of them. With no food left to eat, she eats her placenta. Exhausted, she falls asleep and her husband and her daughter visit her in her dream. She wakes up to rain falling on her through the holes she drilled, and she uses the Tupperware to collect and store it for later. Like easy open cans, she uses a strap and her body weight and strength to peel the metal down and create an exit route above. Mia and her baby climb up, basking in the sun and breathing in fresh air. When she sees an airplane flying over them, she breaks one of the TV screens and uses the glass to catch the attention of the plane. Unfortunately, in doing so, her leg hits the sharp metal edge opening, tearing her leg open. She uses the earphones to make a fishing net and throws her baby's cloth diaper with feces into the water to attract fishes in. This allows her to catch fish and she eats them raw. She also tosses out Tupperware with SOS messages. She tells her baby that she was a teacher and Nico manages their store which had to close when supplies got so scarce that they had nothing left to sell. She shows a photo of her grandma, Noah. Noah means long life and it's feminine of Noah who sailed and got to shore. She shows a photo of Uma, their firstborn who was spotted and taken away by the authorities. Nico calls to hear Mia's voice one last time and informs her that he's only calling to bid her farewell. Unfortunately, he can't come to rescue them. In his attempt to get to his family, authorities found and shot him. He's in hiding and losing a lot of blood as they speak. He wholeheartedly apologizes, promising her that he tried as much as he could and makes her promise that they'll survive no matter what happens. When Nico apologizes for being too optimistic, proposing the plan to escape thinking they could make it, Mia tells him that he saved both of them. She informs him that she has given birth to a precious girl. Nico wishes to be with his family, to which Mia responds that he's always with them. 
She puts their daughter on the phone and Nico introduces himself to her, telling her that he's her dad, the guy who used to squeeze her foot when she was in her mom's tummy. Aware of her husband's nearing end and witnessing their daughter's first and last call with her father, Mia can't help but cry. She tells Nico that their daughter's name is Noah. The call got disconnected and her phone dies and Mia grieves the demise of her partner. Day 26 comes and the water inside the container has already reached the limit. Mia makes two rafts, one for her and one attached to Noah's tiny crib. As she tests out her raft, a seagull takes a piece of their fish. Seeing the seagull renews, Mia's hope that their unimaginably grueling journey is nearing its end. In the middle of the night, one of the holes she tried to block to stop the water from coming in popped open, causing the container to fill rapidly. Upon checking, she sees Uma's photo floating. She tries to reach and grab it but fails to do so, so she goes inside and swims towards it, leaving Noah on the top of the container. She grabs it and inserts it inside her top. While inside, she sees the Tupperware with the Snickers bar in it floating towards the other end of the container. It's too important to lose, so she swims to retrieve it. However, as she does so, the container starts to tilt and Noah starts to float away. She gets hold of the Tupperware, but when she's about to swim back, her foot gets caught up in straps. She tries to cut the strap while the container is filling in with water, almost drowning her. Fortunately, she is able to release herself as the container sinks. As she surfaces, Noah is nowhere to be found. As her helpless screams of Noah's name fill the overwhelming silence of the night, a whale appears, swims to Noah, and sprays her with water, causing her to cry, informing Mia where she is. The sea cradles both of them to sleep, floating in the dark with only the moon shining on them. Morning comes and Noah is safe in her raft while Mia hangs on to it. As Mia holds Noah's hand, she assures her that it's almost over. Feeling weaker by the minute, she apologizes to Noah, saying she did everything she could. She throws raw fish out, which attracts a colony of seagulls to hover over them. A lady trying to catch fish nearby sees the colony of seagulls circling above Noah. Curious, the lady asks her dad who's driving to get closer to it. They pull the raft out of the water and to their surprise, they find Noah peacefully sleeping. Concerned, the lady wonders where the baby's mom is and looks around to see if there's anyone in the water, but she finds no one. When she notices a rope made of earphones attached to the raft, she pulls it and Mia later surfaces as it is tied around her wrist. They pull her out of the water and attempt to revive her until she gains consciousness. She talks to Mia and assures her that they're now safe. Mia, with Noah in her arms, cries in both happiness and relief that it's finally over as they sail towards the beginning of their new life.